guys we are going to start breathing and exchange of gases and this is a very interesting topic that we are going to do in human physiology breathing and exchange of gases so whenever we do any topic what should be our aim whenever we any topic we are doing we'll do all the topics so what should be our aim our aim should be that whenever a question in neat comes whenever a question in neat comes we have the answer in mind we have framed the answer in mind after reading the question right so this should be our aim then we see the options given we take the correct option and we get into neat right so now we are going to start this chapter the breathing and exchange of gases so let us first first of all let us see what is breathing and what is respiration so from small classes we are studying breathing is what breathing breathing uh, is inspiration inspiration that is intake of oxygen that is intake of oxygen and expiration or exhalation right that is giving out co2 giving out co2 now you tell me one thing that in breathing is there is there any enzyme action is there in any enzyme action or is there any uh, release of energy or is there any release of energy no the answer for these two things is no in breathing there is no enzyme action and there is no release of energy and that's why it is a physical process we just take in air and we just give out carbon dioxide whereas whereas what happens in respiration what happens in respiration respiration is when this oxygen when this oxygen reaches to the cells present within the tissues so this oxygen is reaching within the cells and then what is happening energy is getting released right so this is not a physical process very good so we all know this that breathing is a physical process and respiration is not a uh, breathing is extracellular physical process and no energy is released and action of enzymes in is involved so breathing breathing is what breathing is a extracellular process extracellular process and whereas what is respiration respiration is an intracellular process right intracellular process so here enzyme action no respiration yes energy released energy released no in respiration yes right so breathing process is restricted to organs while respiration occurs in all the cells of the body so now if someone asks you are these two terms synonyms obviously now you know that no the answer is no these two terms are not synonyms because you know the difference is breathing is an extracellular process it is a physical process it involves it just involves intake and removal of gases no energy is released and there is no action of enzyme whereas on respiration it is an intracellular process and we can also say that it is a respiration is a bio chemical process it is a intracellular process it is a biochemical process right so now you know that what is breathing and what is respiration right so now let us go forward and let us study about the human respiratory system so now we'll come to the human respiratory system right this is a very interesting topic it is a very very interesting topic human respiratory system this diagram we can see we'll make this diagram we will learn about everything so what is respiratory system what does the respiratory system consists of now you just stop writing or making notes and then you just see you breathe and you see what are the respiratory system what are the respiratory organs that are involved in respiratory 
system so this is nose right so what are the it uh, involved this is the nose right you can only see the nose right this is the nose then where does the air goes it goes to the pharynx pharynx that is actually you can we will study about pharynx in detail okay then it goes more back it goes to the larynx right to the trachea that is the windpipe bronchi and lungs bronchi and lungs right so the air has gone into our lungs so we can just divide respiratory system into two parts the upper respiratory system and the lower respiratory system so in the upper respiratory system includes the nose uh, you can also say nasal cavity pharynx and the lower respiratory system includes the larynx the trachea the bronchi and the lungs if you want you can write lungs also right so basically we can see here this is the nose this is the nose from there this is the pharynx this area larynx trachea bronchi and lungs right bronchi and lungs so basically now we will divide this lower respiratory system into two parts so we will divide this uh, lower respiratory system lower respiratory system starts from think i just told you starts from larynx right so the lower respiratory system we'll divide this into two parts first is the conducting part and the respiratory part so let us now see about the conducting part what is a conducting part as the name implies it is the conducting part it is conducting something so if you have to conduct something if something has to go what what all things will be there there will be interconnected tubes there will be interconnected tubes right and there will be what there will be cavities right since we are talking about respiration right so uh, this is the interconnected tubes and cavities yeah sorry uh, i am not uh, uh, conducting in respiratory part are not two parts of lower uh, respiratory system they are just another way of classifying respiratory system right so please kindly note this that respiratory system is divided into can can also be divided into conducting and respiratory part not the lower respiratory system just the respiratory system so the conducting part interconnected tubes and cavities so if we divide it into this uh, way like in the conducting and respiratory part what all things will be there in the conducting part there is a nose right there is a nose then you can feel the nasal cavity right and pharynx these are all interconnected tubes or cavities larynx right larynx trachea bronchi and bronchioles bronchi and bronchioles right you can even write terminal bronchioles right you can even write terminal bronchioles now if we see the respiratory part if we see the respiratory part of the respiratory system respiratory part so if we say the respiratory part what do we mean that is actually the exchange part that is actually the exchange part right so what what will it consists of it will consists of tissues where within the kidney no within the lungs obviously we are studying respiratory system within the lungs where gas exchange occurs right so these are the tissues very simple right conducting part and respiratory part so what will it what will it all include it will include bronchioles alveolar ducts alveolar ducts 
alveolar sacs. We will study all these things in detail when we are studying about lungs. So don't worry that I am not telling you or anything. Just for a little bit of information, what are alveoli? You might already be knowing it, but I am telling you what are alveoli. Alveoli are the main sites of gas exchange. These are the main sites of gas exchange, right? So now we have learned, let us just revise. So we studied about human respiratory system. We divided the human respiratory system into upper respiratory system, into upper respiratory system and lower respiratory system, right? So in the upper respiratory system, nose and pharynx. In the lower respiratory system, larynx, trachea, bronchi and lungs. We can also divide it into two ways. That is the conducting part and the respiratory part. What is a conducting part? It is interconnected tubes or cavities like nose, nose, nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, terminal bronchioles. These are all, these are just conducting parts. Respiratory part, these are the actual exchange part. These are the actual where exchange part where respiration is, is is taking place so these are the tissues within the lungs where gas exchange occurs right so bronchioles alveolar ducts alveolar sacs what are alveoli alveoli are the main sites of gas exchange i hope this much is clear this we have not even started doing it what what from where actually the questions will come. This is just a framework in your mind because we have to do an introduction to the chapter so as to understand the following chapter. We'll do everything in detail. We'll do nose in detail. We'll do pharynx in detail, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli, lungs, everything in detail. No worries, right? So, no worries. Okay, so let's go ahead and study nose right what i what are we going to study we are going to study nose right very nice so nose now you might be thinking what is there to study in nose right but there's a lot of study to nose think of those ent doctors right right okay so <laughs> let's study about nose very let us let me change the color i've got bored with this pink color okay green so let us see nose. So what is nose? Nose is what? It is present on your face, right? But as uh, neat students who are very, you know, going to very soon going to become doctors. So you should, you know, um, be able to define what is nose. So the nose is a specialized organ. Is a specialized organ at the entrance of respiratory system at the entrance of the respiratory system that is divided that is divided into an external and internal portion, right? That is divided into an external and internal portion. So what is the external portion that is visible on our nose? And what is the internal portion? That is the nasal chamber. So our main concern will be the nasal chamber, right? So the external nose is the portion that is visible that is visible and internal portion is the nasal uh, nasal see the external nose is the that is visible on the face and what is internal portion that is the nasal chamber right so the what is external nose composed of it is a framework it is a framework of bone right you can feel touch your nose and see can you feel the bone right it is a framework of bone and highline cartilage covered with muscle and bone so the external nose is the portion of the nose visible on the face and consists of a supporting framework of bone and highline cartilage covered with muscle and bone 
and skin and skin and uh, it is okay we get and it is lined with very easy it is lined with a mucus membrane right it is lined with a mucus membrane right so what is the what is the interior structure of the uh, external lobes have three functions the interior structures of external nose exterior structures of x have three functions right three functions first is the warming moistening and filtering of incoming air when we are breathing so if the air is very cold or you know the temperature is different so what happens it warms the air it moistens the air and it filters the air okay we can also smell right so in ukg and prep we study smell is a function of nose now we are big big students so what do we say detecting olfactory stimuli detecting olfactory stimuli right if you close your nose and try to speak a different kind of sound comes right even the singers use this right so it helps it also helps in modifying speech vibrations as they pass through the large resonating chambers so basically so basically the exterior the in, uh, external nose the interior structure of external nose has three functions has three functions warming moistening and filtering of incoming air detecting olfactory stimuli and modifying speech vibrations very good now we have studied about nose what is nose it is a specialized organ at the entrance of respiratory system my god we are giving so much importance no by this definition we feel that such an important structure such a important um, organ is there and it is actually very important so let us define nose the nose the nose is a specialized organ right at the entrance of respiratory system that is divided into an external and internal portion right so the external portion the external nose is covered by hyaline cartilage covered with muscle bone skin mucous membrane three functions now we'll do the internal parts of uh, uh, the the internal parts of external nose are the external nares what are external nares these are the nostrils these are the nostrils and uh, you know what are these nostrils right these are two openings on the these are two openings on the under surface of external nose these are two openings on the under uh, these are two openings on the under surface of uh, external nose right and nasal chambers what is nasal chamber so listen carefully what i am going to say what is a nasal chamber nasal chamber is a large space what is nasal chamber nasal chamber is a large space in the anterior aspect of the skull that lies inferior to the nasal bone and superior to the oral cavity right you will understand when i'll draw and write what do we mean by nasal chamber so if this is a face right this is a face this is the tongue this is the palate this is the nasal chamber and this is the external nares right external nares so it is a large space anterior in the anterior aspect understood that lies inferior to the nasal bone and superior to the oral cavity this is the oral cavity so superior to the oral cavity right so it is lined with muscle and mucous membrane okay it is lined with it is lined with nasal chamber it is lined with muscle and mucous membrane very good okay so 
uh, here when the nasal chamber ends when the nasal chamber ends uh, there is there is also known as internal nares so what is this here it is the internal nares here we saw external nares and these are internal nares so internal nares or what internal nares can also be known as like external nares are also called nostrils internal nares can also be known as coni okay so they can also be known as coni so now we'll see the nasal chambers what are the nasal chambers and we told you that this is a nasal chamber now let us see what are the nasal chambers first is the nasal septum so let us study about nasal septum right nasal septum nasal vestibule nasal cavity nasal concha this is divided into superior middle and inferior so let us study each one in detail what is nasal septum nasal septum is a vertical partition it is a vertical let me just add a paper here so that so what is a nasal septum nasal septum septum is anything which is dividing okay it is always always used for something when there is some uh, partition or some division so nasal septum is a vertical partition very good i hope you are understanding and making notes because uh, if you study this whatever i am teaching any question whatever question comes in breathing and exchange of gases you will be able to do it uh, some of you might be feeling that i am saying one thing again and again right right but you'll understand this after you complete the chapter when we when we have completed the chapter you will realize that you don't need to learn it because so many times i'm saying the same thing again and again it's striking your brain and you're already learning it you're not realizing it but you are learning it right so that's why i'm saying this again and again and after we finish the chapter see you have a lot of time okay this video is not for people who are just immediately going to give neat they can also see but it's mainly for the people who who are interested in olympiads or you know next year they are going to give meet so that's why i'm teaching slowly each each portion i will cover very nicely right so if you study this just don't worry leave zoology to me okay so we were at nasal septum so it is a vertical partition what is this vertical if it is a partition it might be dividing into it might be it is dividing something into two parts what is it dividing it is dividing the it is dividing the nasal cavity and into what it is dividing it is divided it into right and left sides it is dividing it it into right and left sides so um so when air enters when air enters what happens so when air enters the nostrils right so what happens to that air passes it passes through the vestibule right a chamber vestibule is a chamber and what is this vestibule lined with it is lined by it is lined by skin which has coarse hairs which has coarse hairs coarse hairs what are coarse hairs thick hairs right thick hairs and what is what are these coarse hairs doing these are filtering very good you know everything and what are those filtering they are filtering large dust particles right you already know so much right i'm here just to just as a mentor right so we studied nasal septum is a vertical partition it is dividing the nasal cavity into right and left sides when the air enters the nostrils it passes the vestibule and which is lined by skin which has coarse hairs which means thick hairs and what is what are these coarse hairs doing they are filtering the large dust particle so when we said air enters the nostril what we said it passes through the vestibule so the next thing we are going to study is the nasal 
vestibule right the next thing that we are going to study is the nasal vestibule what is uh, nasal uh, vestibule uh, it is lined by the most important thing that you should know it is lined by uh, uh, non keratinized non keratinized squamous epithelium non keratinized squamous epithelium uh, i think if i am not wrong once this question was asked uh, many options were given and uh, nasal vestibule is lined by non keratinized squamous epithelium i think once a question has had came that what kind of epithelium has nasal vestibule right so nasal it is the anterior portion of the nasal chamber just inside the nostrils like you know this is the nose is not just inside the nostril you see so this is the nasal vestibule it is lined by non keratinized squamous epithelium one more thing which you need to know it is ectodermal in origin you should know these two things about nasal vestibule so let me add a page okay so now we are going to study about nasal cavity we are going to study about nasal cavity right so what is nasal cavity um it is something you know which uh, is a uh, uh, which is actually uh, which you should know because if questions are framed on nose it, they will come from nasal cavity let me write it a little in a proper way right nasal cavity right i hope you are getting me having fun studying nose in detail never thought that such a little organ we have to study so much in detail right so first thing it is divided into a larger larger respiratory region and a smaller olfactory region so you have to understand this just uh, absorb this thing that it is divided into a larger respiratory and a smaller and a smaller uh, olfactory uh, region right so those are the respiratory region let us study about the respiratory region respiratory region of nasal cavity right respiratory region of nasal cavity so the respiratory region is lined by pseudo stratified pseudo stratified ciliated ciliated columnar columnar epithelium right something to remember so respiratory region of nasal cavity pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium first thing that we need to know second thing it has numerous goblet cells it has numerous goblet cells you might be understanding why because it's the respiratory region it needs to have a ciliated columnar epithelium and goblet cells are what goblet cells are mucus secreting cells right these are mucus secreting cells right so this is also known as what this is also known as respiratory epithelium this is also known as respiratory epithelium so just see the screen for uh, one minute and just see that you know uh, if you have not understood anything or uh, you want you have not understood anything right so that you can just go back and revise so right so it is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium numerous goblet cells and what are we talking about we are talking about the respiratory region of nasal cavity very good 
now we will study about the all olfactory epithelium see there was a smaller olfactory region olfactory epithelium we already did respiratory epithelium let us do the olfactory epithelium uh, this region acts as an this region this region acts as organ of taste sound oh, smell <laughs> this region acts as a uh, organ of smell okay so this there is an respiratory epithelium and there is an olfactory epithelium okay so now let us go to the what are we studying don't forget what, what, what we are studying nasal chamber right we are studying nasal chamber which has four parts nasal septum we did right nasal septum we did nasal vestibule we did right nasal cavity we just did respiratory and olfactory epithelium now we are going to do the nasal conchi nasal conchi so they, these these are what nasal conchi let us study about nasal conchi okay so there uh, they are three bony ridges these are actually three bony ridges okay so if there are three bony ridges what will happen uh, what will happen they will divide the area into parts so and they are also when there are three bony ridges they will have three names also right so one will have a superior one is called superior nasal conchi the other one is called the middle and the third one is called the inferior nasal conchi so what do they do they divide the uh, what what these three bony ridges what do they do they divide the nasal cavity they divide the nasal cavity into series of pathways okay into series of pathways and if they're dividing it into series of pathways those pathways will also have names so these names are superior middle and inferior meatuses meatuses meters middle meters and inferior meters right so uh, what uh, they are like okay i'll tell you i should draw a diagram and tell you or else you will not understand so this is a face so this is a face and uh, right now this is the tongue this is the palate this is the nasal chamber so this is the tongue this is the palate we'll study all this in digestive system and this is the nasal chamber right this is the nasal chamber these are the internal internal nares right these are the internal nares okay so it is like this three bony ridges and this is dividing and uh, so this is the uh, let me tell you the olfactory epithelium also so this forms the, this area actually forms the olfactory this area is the olfactory epithelium right this area is the olfactory epithelium and these three areas that you can see these is the uh, these are the superior middle and the inferior superior middle and inferior concave superior middle and inferior concave right so uh, like this and uh, what else is there mm, superior and uh, okay so this is and these are dividing and what are they doing they are dividing the uh, these concaves what are they doing they are dividing the 
uh, air passage into superior, middle, and inferior, uh, superior, middle, and interior nasal meatuses. Right. So uh, basically, uh, see, this is uh, these are dividing into pathways, right? So these are the nasal meatuses. Okay. So we have done nasal chamber. Let me just see if anything, if anything is left. Nasal septum, nasal vestibule, nasal cavity, and lesion. Hmm. Okay. Good. So right. So let us see now. Um, what else can I tell you about this? I'm just thinking. Okay. So uh what do this conchae and meters do? Conchae and meters do? They obviously, they increase the surface area. They increase the uh, surface area and they increase the surface area, one thing. And what else they do? They prevent dehydration. How? How are they preventing dehydration? By, by trapping water droplets during, during what? During exhalation, okay, during exhalation. So what is the function of conchae and meatuses? It increases the surface area and uh, it increases the surface area and it prevents dehydration by trapping water droplets during exhalation. Okay, so uh, I'll tell you two more things. What happens when we inhale? When we inhale cold air. When we inhale cold air, what happens? Blood supply, blood supply to the respiratory membrane, respiratory epithelium increases. Okay, why does it increases? Think, because blood supply increases, which results, it results in what? It results in heat radiation and heat radiation and what happens the air gets warmer very nice and what happens when we inhale warm air what happens when we inhale warm air the mucus secretion increases what happens the mucus secretion increases and what happens this mucus evaporates and in physics we have learned evaporation or in chemistry this evaporation causes cooling so when this mucus evaporates what affects cooling okay just these two things i wanted to tell you hope uh, you have understood this so now let me just tell you about this diagram it is a very interesting diagram so we will start with this is a nose right so let us start uh, this is a tongue right that is forming the base that i always draw this base okay and uh, this is the nasal chamber this is the this is the nasal chamber right and i was telling you um what else? This is the trachea, which we'll study afterwards. Okay. And uh, this is the hyoid bone. We don't need to know it. Okay. So we'll study about larynx and trachea afterwards. What we are concerned with is the nasal chamber. So let us study the nasal chamber. As I had told you that the nasal chamber is divided into what? It is divided into superior, middle, and inferior. Uh, what? Super, conchae, superior, middle, and inferior nasal conchae. This is divided into superior, middle, and inferior nasal 
concave, right? This is the external nair. So this is dividing, can you see this, this, and this? And nasal meatuses is superior, middle, and inferior. Superior, middle, and inferior. Okay, so I have already told you that uh, what are nasal conchae and nasal meatuses doing, right? If they are increasing, what are they doing? They're increasing the surface area. Don't forget things. And they are preventing, just revising, just I'm writing on top right hand, preventing dehydration, right? Don't forget things. So these, th these meatuses and conchies are increasing surface area and preventing dehydration. So what, are, what all have we did? We have done, we have done breathing, respiration. Um, let us see what all. So I'll just tell you what all have we did. We have did about what is breathing and what is respiration, right? We have learned about the upper respiratory system we have done the lower respiratory system we have just seen the another way of dividing conducting part and respiratory part and we have done nose and nose what we have done we have done external nose right we have done external nose we have done the internal parts of external nose what else have we done we have done nasal chamber right we have done nasal chamber nasal septum vestibule cavity and nasal concave we have done this much now what will we do so we will do after this what will we do we'll do pharynx and we'll do larynx we'll do trachea we'll do bronchi and we'll do lungs these structures we will do after we do these all structures then we'll come to the process we'll come to the process then we'll do questions and then the chapter is then the chapter is done the chapter is done yay Right, so um, the next video I'll do pharynx and larynx for you guys. And till then, revise, study pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, lungs, process so that you're able to better understand and you're able to actually better absorb what I'm saying. You don't have to just learn these things, you just have to just once read the chapter if you want, or if you don't want, you can just first study and then read. Okay. So nice. Okay, guys. Bye-bye for now. And uh, okay. Bye.